Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to the Matt Mettler Podcast Broadcast. It is my great pleasure to be here with you. I am, of course, your host, Matt Mettler. Since today is my birthday, and uh, this is the birthday edition of the Matt Mettler Podcast Broadcast, I'm going to try and keep it mostly light today, right? Mostly light. Or at least uh, in a lighter note, lighter tone, right? Today won't be quite so serious. I do have something serious to talk about during this, but but uh, for the most part, I just want to talk about fun shit, okay? First off, thank you to all my wonderful friends that wish me happy birthday on, on social media. Even though I don't hang out on social media, the one day a year that I go to take a look is my birthday. So to all my peeps out there that wish me a happy birthday, thank you so much, man. You guys are the best. And I really appreciate all of you. I really do. I've seen some really great movies lately, man. It's been pretty good at the box office lately. There's been some pretty decent movies that have come out. One of the ones that I saw just the other day that was really, really great was Alita. Uh, I have to say, I was hella impressed with Alita. That was a great film. It was kind of sad because it felt like to me it was everything that Ghost in the Shell was supposed to be, but then it wasn't because they kept trying to muck with the story. I was really upset about how Ghost in the Shell transpired as a live action film because they deviated quite a bit from the original story. The original story is so good, I don't know why you need to change it. All you really had to do was just tell it. All you had to do is just tell it in a really timely, new kind of way, right? That was it. You didn't have to rewrite the story. So, so Alita was amazing. It was an incredible film. Great story about a powerful female lead character who kicks ass. What I loved about Alita was her fearlessness. She didn't have the fear gene in her, which was pretty freaking awesome, right? I think we would all like to be like that. I think all of us wish we could be like that in our day-to-day lives, right? So great film. What a great movie. Great story. Creepy. (laughs) Creepy with all the cyber bodies and all that shit. The one hunter guy, the pretty face boy hunter guy, uh, he was was super creepy, man. I'm not going to give you any spoilers uh, as far as the movie, but it was just really, really great. If you have not, if there's some way that you haven't seen Alita yet, watch it. It's really, really well done. Love the father figure character in there that's played by, uh, I want to say, crap, I can't remember his name. The guy that plays in all of Quentin's movies. He did, it was a great performance on his part. Everybody gave great performances in that, actually. It's really, really well done. So uh, I loved Alita. That was fabulous. What a great film. See Alita, right? I'd give that, I'd fully give that two thumbs up. We recently saw Shazam. (laughs) I don't know how old you guys are, but Shazam was a Saturday morning thing when I was a kid, right? It was super duper cheesy. So to see Shazam as a live action film in the day and age of really great visual effects, um, it actually was a tremendously better story than it ever was when it was in my era, right? So I really enjoyed Shazam. It was a great movie that you could watch with your family. It was uh, mostly the kind of humor that uh, either goes over your kids' heads or is within the boundaries of what your kids should be seeing, right? So I really enjoyed Shazam. It was a lot of fun. Another great film that we just watched was The Long Shot with Seth Rogen and Charlize Theron. I have to say, I love Charlize Theron as an actress. She is incredible. I don't think there's a role that you could give her that she couldn't play. (laughs) If you guys have never seen her in Monster, she completely metamorphosizes into another person for that role. So Charlize is, in my opinion, one of the better most amazing actresses out there, right? Like, I really don't think there's anything she can't play. And even though she's ridiculously beautiful, when she plays roles where that is not a key component of her character, she pulls that off too, right? Like, she, I, yeah, it's just, I don't think there's a role that she can't play. And I thought that she was a tremendous counterpoint to Seth Rogen, who has actually, I hate to say it, who has tr- come a tremendously long way as an actor from the Pineapple Express days. My gauge for Seth Rogen is Pineapple Express, right? Which in my opinion was a terrible movie. And maybe that's because I was a pot dealer. So I take it personally, the way they portray pot dealers in there, but the film itself was just, you know, mm, 
it was like his sophomore effort or one of his first efforts, right? So to see the growth in his acting trajectory has been pretty amazing because in this, he plays a very funny, charming, warm sort of lead character that you really like, that I think is a lot more representative of maybe the rest of us than Tom Cruise probably is, right? So as a leading man character, I thought he played a great job in that and great film. See or Rent the Long Shot with Seth Rogen and Charlize Theron. It was really good. I liked it. We went and saw... The Volcano Movie in 3D. We went and saw that over at the uh, Denver Museum, and it was incredible, man. It was amazing. Now, I have never been to a volcano in my lifetime, and it's on my bucket list, right? It's on my list of things that I have to check off. But seeing that film just makes it that much more mm, incredible because the massiveness of some of these volcanoes and and some of the videography in that film is just incredible. It is totally worth it. The only thing I'll say is I had a little bit of a side effect headache from the 3D glasses after the film was over, but the film itself is absolutely incredible and I highly recommend seeing the Volcano movie. It was really, really amazing, right? And then uh, another one that I loved was uh, we recently saw the remake of Aladdin and I loved it, man. I have to say I really enjoyed the remake of Aladdin I like the way that they didn't ruin it. I like the way that they didn't try to change it too much because I thought that's another one of those some ones where it was already a good film. All you really had to do was remake it. And I give Will Smith props for doing such a great job as the role of the genie. Um, that's big shoes to follow behind Robin Williams, right? So for him to do such a great job, definitely loved it and um, would recommend it to others. Was very glad that Disney didn't ruin it. Um, I think... I f almost feel like Disney's kind of taking the hint that they can only stick so many messages in a film before we tell them that it sucks, right? So if you want to try and put one message in a film or something like that, you could probably sneak it in there. You probably slide it in there. But if you're trying to put the entire tome of political correctness into every freaking film that you guys cook up, it's going to be flop city from here on out, right? So... I was really pleasantly surprised that they tried to keep the preaching down. It's kind of funny how Hollywood has now become the preacher, right? Hollywood for so long talked about how much they hate religion and preaching and all that crap, right? But now they are the preachers. So they need to get down off their freaking high horse and quit preaching to everybody about what they have to do or what they need to do. So loved Aladdin, man. See that one. So Becky and I were talking the other day, and we were talking about poverty, and we were talking about how we talk a lot in America about trying to eliminate poverty. And I sort of had a, an epiphany about eliminating poverty. And the epiphany is this. It's simply unrealistic to expect to eliminate poverty. It's existed for perhaps as long as money has. Poverty is a relativistic indicator and doesn't reflect the richness that one has by being more self-reliant and part of a more closely knit society than to have technology or money as a replacement for social interaction. I think about the fact that we always talk about wanting to eliminate poverty. I now completely recognize that that is a totally unrealistic expectation. <laughs> and it makes me realize that we have been sold by our politicians many unrealistic expectations for change for the world, for many things, right? Because when I think about the longer term effect of, of poverty on society, poverty's always existed. There's always been kids who didn't have food in their mouths. There have always been people who didn't have and those who did. It's always existed from the beginning of uh, humans on this planet. There have always been some who had and some who did not. For us to be so arrogant to think that we will eliminate poverty is ridiculous. We can't even make our government run efficiently. We could not possibly eliminate poverty until we force our government to run with efficiency, until we force our government to become a better actor in the world and less of a shady guy. Before we could eliminate poverty, we got to fix our corrupted ass government, man, for sure. So uh, since today is my birthday, I've had a lot of time to reflect and uh, one of the things I realized is that I, I've made a lot of mistakes in my life. And I've learned a lot of lessons in all humbleness, right? I've done things I'm not proud of. I've made mistakes in my life. 
but I feel like I'm better now. I feel like I'm a better human now than I was then. And learning all those lessons has made me tempered, has tempered me, right? For sure. I want to thank my mom. She has always been really amazing in supporting me in my dreams. And I know that there have been times in my life when, like, for instance, when I told her I wanted to go into the concert and entertainment business, I know that she thought that was a crazy pipe dream. Um, but I think that when I went out and actually did it for like 12 years, 10, 12 years, it showed her that I was serious about it. But in a way, I'm kind of glad to get back to using the skills that I have in the entertainment world to get paid because it's so much more satisfying. It feeds your soul so much more than just working in an office does, man. really does. Learned a lot of lessons in my lifetime. Watched a lot of things happen. Watched the world change quite a bit. It's messed up because the world is a funny place, right? For as much as it changes, it doesn't change that much. There's definitely a new undercurrent in the world today. With that undercurrent being, um, I think a good part of us walk around on eggshells because we're really worried about what people are going to say or think or do or things like that, right? But this has been a really interesting experiment for me because... I've offered people the opportunity to speak your mind, man. If you, if you don't like what I say, if you don't like the shit I say, leave me a comment. Send me an email. You know, you can, you can do that. Feel free. And it hasn't happened yet. <laughs> Nobody's really done that yet. And I, it's kind of weird, right? I, I would have thought for sure that somewhere along the way, something I said would have pissed somebody off enough to get them to write me about it. But apparently you guys just mostly agree. Or I, the other thing I can, I, I can only infer from that is that I think maybe I say a lot of the things that people wish they could say but can't because of their jobs or because of their positions or because of their, their whatever it is. They have jobs to lose and things like that. But right now, I'm in a perfect position where I am allowed to speak my mind. The people that I'm working with, they know and understand what I'm doing and they don't judge me for it, which is really cool because... I guarantee that if I was still at the place that I used to work, they'd be all over me like a cheap suit about all the shit that I've said. I would not be allowed to have this show. So it's really cool that I've figured out a way that I can do this show, be real with you guys, speak the truth, and still be able to make money in the world, right? So that's pretty great. And I'm pretty thankful all the way around to the universe for making all of this work somehow, magically. Right? There's definitely a component of magic that we can attribute to things in the universe that makes it all work. There's an unseen component to all of this that none of us understands. <laughs> Sounds all nice. It's funny, I just got a message. It says, hey Matt, for uh, a gig this weekend, I'll still have you drive, but I'm going to put you in the A1 role and bump up your pay. Sound good? <laughs> Hell yeah! Hell yeah, that sounds good. I love when people say shit like, hey, I want to pay you more money to go do this show. How would you feel about that? Okay, how about you pay me more money to go do this show? That'd be great, man. I'd love that. So yeah, I'm, dude, see, the world is just going great right now. Like, The universe is doing a really great job. Thank you, universe, by the way. Thank you, universe. You're doing a fucking amazing job of helping me make all of this stuff happen and helping me make all this work, right? Because... um. I got to be honest, man, like, uh, you know, this is the great unknown. It's very reassuring that I'm getting quite a few views now. It's kind of cool because I'll put something out and like within the first day, it'll have like 25 views, right? Which is pretty sweet. That's pretty good. I want it to keep growing. I want it to get bigger. I want it to, to have more fans and more listeners. But I mean, for me to put something out and then just almost immediately everybody go out and listen to it or check it out, dude, that's awesome. That's really great, man. I'm excited about that, right? That's really cool. And Kudos to all of you guys, because that's you guys doing that, man. That's you guys out on your end doing that sort of stuff. I really appreciate that. I think that it's great that, that you must think enough of this show that when I put it out, that you're interested to see what I had to say, right? It's, I don't know if it's because you think I'm effing crazy or because you like what I have to say, but either way, thank you. I really appreciate that, man. I really do. Man, my microphone sounds freaking amazing, dude. It's picking up every single nuance of every single sound in here. It's completely unreal, man. I'll bet if I turned this tube preamp up, I could get a, I could catch a mouse 
farting through cotton. <laughs> this thing has so much ridiculous ass gain on it, man. This is like Academy of Arts and Sciences recording good. <laughs> this microphone is ridiculous, dude. I love it. Thank you to the people at Sure, because I'm using a Sure Beta 58, and man, does it sound amazing. I love this microphone. Now, if you guys are jealous of my tone, you need to get some tubes, because it's tubes that's making all this magic happen. It's tubes that make my microphone sound. I mean, you know, it, it helps if you have a nice voice. <laughs> but it's tubes that make my microphone sound so amazing. All right, well, uh, I really don't have anything else to talk about on this uh, short birthday edition of the Matt Mettler podcast broadcast. I'd like to thank every single one of you for coming out and joining me and uh, listening to what I have to say. Please feel free to like, subscribe, click the notification bell, share it with your friends, talk about it. All of those things help me out. You can leave comments or you can even get a hold of me. You can email me or you could contact me on the phone. All of those things are totally viable, right? And uh, <laughs> I've been getting a couple of weird random phone calls that make me wonder if it's people out there, you know, testing. Does, it, does he really answer his phone? Will he really answer his phone? I might send you to voicemail to screen you just to see what you have to say. But yeah, I mean, if, if you're legit and you're not a rude a-hole, I'll definitely get back in contact with people, right? I'm curious to see what people think. And I'm curious to hear what people have to say. So yeah, if you contact me, I'll definitely get back with you. No doubt about it. Again, thank you guys for watching the Matt Mettler podcast. I super appreciate all of you. You guys are 50% of this show because without you watching it, nothing happens, man. Uh, so thank you for that. Be sure that you join me on the next episode of the Matt Mettler podcast. The Matt Mettler podcast is a Matt Mettler production. Copyright 2019.